Now that we understand the address and villain sections and how the route works, now we're going to see the templates. And that's going to be specific use cases for some MSPs or some companies that have the need in the topology they have, for example, one hub and several spokes, and they have the SD1 fabric. And then they need a specific or unique subnets or just the same subnet in all the branches that they have. You can say a retail, and each shop is going to have the same 10.10.10.x uh, subnet, or they're going to have a unique subnet based on the way that they distribute their, their IP throughout the whole organization. So how can you then deploy in the fastest and most efficient, effective way this branch IP addressing and routing across the whole global, let's say, or the whole region um, infrastructure that you have? So that's why we have the MX templates. What you need to do at the beginning is just let's create a new network. Just click here, create network. You don't need to have even a device to do that. Just click there, create network, put a name, click save. So what we did, we did this, create a network and it's, gonna, it's called new branch. And then we're gonna go and create the templates. So to create the templates, you go to organization, configuration templates. This is the session we're gonna see all the templates that you have created. So let's say, let's create a new template. And let's say this is going to be our branch, branch config you can create. Add a new, before I created the one, one that is called branch template, but forget about it. This is a branch config and target networks. That's why you have to create a new network, just a domain network at the beginning. You don't even have to configure anything, just create it. And the target networks, you find that one for us is new branch. So it's that. What that means is that you need to have at least one network at the beginning to create your template that is going to be bound to that template. So you bind that, save changes. And what it does is going to create the template configuration. Once you save the changes, you see the branch config here, you click. And in new branch, which are the list of all the networks. So we can say that each network is one branch. You're going to see it here. For example, if I want to go to the new branch network, you know that it changes here. So now you see that I'm in a new branch. What kind of configuration I can make in addressing at VLANs? You see, uh, not much. You see that I cannot even configure the MX IP as subnet. And it's, and it's right, it's good. It's because of the reasons that it's bound to the configuration template. So you have a configuration overlay what you can do and the branches will obey to that configuration that's why you cannot configure any address and VLANs to make it scalable you just have to go to one place and it's going to trickle down in all the branches that are bound to that template so to make configuration you have to go to the template branch config and here you will see the same thing that you were here seeing before in the previous videos and how to configure this is going to be a little bit unique because it's to configure the whole branches at the same time. So you have the two options, as I mentioned before, depending on your business case or use case. Here, you can say, let's just have this MX IP address for all the MXs across all the branches and have this subnet. So every store or every shop that I'm gonna have, they're gonna be connected through the auto VPN SD1 fabric would have the same exact subnet. That's your, your case, great. You don't even have to make any changes. Just change the subnet that you want save changes, and that will propagate. So if you remember, if we went back to the branch, this is the subnet that is being used at the moment. But, but if you have a unique different subnet in each branch because of the way that you route the traffic and the way that you want to uh, make the adjustments of the configuration in the SD1 fabric out to VPN, you can select VLANs. This one is going to be a single LAN. This one is you have different VLANs, even inside if they are unique, you can do that as well. This is VLAN 1. If you say, okay, I'm going to have just two VLANs, then the next name, the VLAN, just put the IMAX IP address and the subnet, and it's going to create the other VLAN. So you can have two unique VLANs or two same VLANs here for all the branches. But then what if I want to have different subnet in each branch for this specific VLAN? To do that, you can click here, make the changes saying unique, let's put here, say unique VLAN. Let's say that this is VLAN 10. And then it's gonna change from same to unique. And you see that there are different options. 
the MX IP address will be auto generated. Why? Because then each subnet is going to be different. You can specifically say, oh, for my 100 branches, this is going to be the 100 MX IP subnets and it's going to be the 100 MX IP. This is not scalable then. So what you can scale is saying the subnet that I want in each specific branch is going to be doing a slash 24 or the subnet that you want. So you say each branch is going to have in that VLAN 10 a slash 24 subnet. And the bigger pool when we're going to get this slash 24 is this subnet. It means that this is the big pool when every time you create a branch, the dashboard is going to create that branch network and it's going to subtract a slash 24 subnet from that bigger pool. That's what it means. So if you say that every subnet, this VLAN needs slash 24, and this is the bigger pool that they can extract that info, click update. You see that it changes now. It says VLAN 10 unique VLAN. I'm going to take a slash 24 chunk from this 10.0.0 slash 8 every time that I want to create a branch. Go down, click update. If everything goes well, it's saved, and that is going to automatically change all the branches that you have bound to this template. So if that's the case, if we go back, say this network's acting as a configuration template for one network, let's go to the list of networks, click in the new branch, because that's the new branch network that we say. If we go to security and SD1, addressing and VLANs, what we see is VLAN 10, unique VLAN, the subnet changes. You see, now it's bound because it took then that subnet from the 10.0.0 sort. You can ask, Joan, then why don't we have 10.0.0.0 slash 24, the first one? Well, it's a random calculation, same random calculation. And you can go and ask Cisco Meraki support to explain what is the algorithm that you can use to select one. So don't think that it's going to be a sequential chunks of slash 24. You see, the first sum that we bound to this one was not 10.0.0.0 slash 24. It was 10.69.29.0 slash 24. And the max IP address is going to be taken from that specific sum. That's why you don't have to specify the max IP address in the template at the beginning. So that's how you make it scalable. If you have hundreds of branches, you just have to select what is the specific template that you want. If you have one, two, three different VLANs, and then select if that VLAN is the same IP address subnet for all the branches, you have to put select here the same. Or if you want a unique subset for the bigger pool of 10.10.0 slash 8 or whatever you need, then it's going to take it, uniquely identify a subnet for each branch, and then set it out there. So that's how the max templates work. See you in the next one.